You know, we live in a very driven culture. Um, if you've ever been to other cultures, especially a third world nation, you will see that not everyone is, is, is as driven as we are. And there are benefits to living in this culture. We have so many conveniences. Um, Sometimes we complain about our roads, but let me tell you what, you go to another country like Africa, something like that, and we, we, are, we are so blessed. We just, we just have so many conveniences. I mean, a number of us have served in places where, you know, church doesn't have a, a, a climate-controlled building like we're sitting in right now. Uh, you're outside, you're sweating, you're just, there's just so many conveniences. But there are also negatives to living in our our driven culture and one of those negatives is is that we constantly get the message that you can't experience fulfillment unless you are doing more unless you are experiencing success and the way that we in our culture classify success is that you're doing better than your neighbor <laughs> Whoever that is, okay, whatever their accomplishments are, and, and no matter what your interests are, no matter what your giftings are, we constantly give that message that you can't experience fulfillment, joy, all of those things unless that you're doing better than somebody else. But here's the thing, what that message really does is it draws us away from the things that will actually fulfill us, and that's what we're going to be talking about about this morning. You see, each of us were created in such a way, whether we're male or female, no matter what our giftings are, we were created to serve those around us. That's where we really find the fulfillment. And it's really oftentimes uh, serving the, the vulnerable, serving um, those who uh, may be in a weaker state, whatever that is. That's where we really find the fulfillment because that's what we were created for. But so many times this driven nature okay, that we have and this driven message that we're given, it actually pulls us away from the things that will bring us fulfillment. And we're chasing this carrot that continues to move in front of us and we never quite reach thinking, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. And sometimes we get glimpses of it. And we think that, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get easy from here. But the whole time what we're actually do is we're, we're moving away from what would actually bring fulfillment. The scripture that we're going to look at this morning is, is in the very beginning of scripture. It's in Genesis. And I refer to this scripture a lot. I haven't actually used it as the main text very often. But I refer to it a lot because there's so much that we see in the very beginning when God first created Adam and Eve and, and the struggles that they had at that time that, that continue to be struggles for us today. Well, this morning we're going to go to that scripture and we're going to look at what God really created them for in the very beginning. Because what you see there is still true for us today. And although we are not living in the Garden of Eden, we still are called to be a keeper of the garden. Wherever you have been planted... Wherever God has planted you is the very garden that you have been called to tend. But what you need to know this morning and what we're going to look at is that you are constantly going to be drawn away from it. The enemy constantly wants to draw your focus away from it because that is the place where you will find fulfillment. It's the place that God has called you to serve so that you can be a blessing to others, which again is where you find fulfillment. But the enemy is going to constantly draw you away. He's going to draw you away with illusions of grandeur, saying that you, you can be happier, you can experience more, but you got to go get it. You got to get out of this stinking garden that you find yourselves trapped in and go after more. But I want you to know this morning, it's not true. It's not true. The place that you are going to find the fulfillment that, that you're craving, because every one of us are, again, whether you're male, female, whatever your giftings are, we, we, we all crave this fulfillment in life. How do we find that? We're going to look at that this morning. The scripture we're going to be in is Genesis chapter 2. 
Genesis chapter 2. Um, I'm going to be beginning in verse 8. And the first few chapters of Genesis are all about the creation of the world and what the world was like at that time. And as we enter this text, we're going to find God um, creating man and woman. And um, we're, we're, we're going to learn about what he had called them to at that time. So beginning in verse 8, it says this. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he placed the man he had made. Now the first thing I want to point out before we go any further is, oftentimes we think of Eden as the garden. Eden was not the garden. The garden was in Eden. So this was just a particular place on the earth at that time that God had created. But within Eden, okay, he had placed this garden and that's where he put the man. Why do we have gardens? Right now, there, there are many of you are planting gardens. This is the time. This is spring. We're, we're getting the gardens ready. Well, the reason that we plant gardens is for the harvest that will come about. But how do you get the harvest? Well, the whole point of the garden is that the garden is not the wild. The garden is away from the wild. Why do you need that? Because it's the only place that things can grow and not be taken over by the wild. They won't survive out in the wild. Otherwise, why plant a garden? You wouldn't need to. All you would have to do is walk out in the woods and start picking tomatoes and all of these things that you desire. But you can't do that, can you? No, because if you place these things out in the wild, they're not gonna produce the harvest that you are looking for that's going to be a blessing to you. But again, here's what happens. The enemy knows this, so what he wants to do is to draw you out into the wild so that the garden is not tended and taken care of so that other things can come in and tear it apart. And what happens is the harvest doesn't take place. You know, as so we're talking about motherhood and we're celebrating that this morning, again, the enemy is all about destroying the family. So what he seeks to do is to take the two primary components of the family, which is the mother and the father, and to get them directed somewhere else. He doesn't care where else, get them directed somewhere else. Why? So that the family isn't taken care of. I mean, when you think of children, children are in that vulnerable place, right? And they're growing up. If they're not tended to, if they're not protected, what will come about? Well, what won't come about is this harvest that will be a blessing to others. What will come about is death and destruction. If you don't tend to your garden, I mean, right now, maybe some of you that are planning, you've got big dreams for this garden. And you're picturing the, the grand fruit that's, that's going to come about. But here's the reality. Summer's coming. Summer's coming, and, and you're going to get pulled into all kinds of activities. And, and as you're getting pulled into all these activities, guess what? The weeds are going to keep on growing. Oh, and those bugs, those bugs that you're not paying attention to because you got all this other stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be creeping in. Oh, and the not so small bugs, you know, like the big animals, maybe some deer, you know, uh, all kinds of animals. They're coming in. They're like, ooh, I want some of that fruit, right? If you're not there and you're not tending the garden that God has placed you in, guess what? All kinds of predators from the inside and from the outside are going to come into the garden and they're going to take the weak and the vulnerable. And the weak and the vulnerable are not going to have the opportunity to grow up and to produce the fruit that God wants for them. Do you see what I'm saying? But this doesn't even have to just be about the family, okay? Maybe, maybe you're not married. It doesn't matter. You've been planted in a garden. God has put you in a place where there are people around you that you are meant to serve and to tend to. But again, we don't do that when we're focused on accomplishing things. When, when we have these goals in our society, we're all about goals, right? You got to set the goal. You got to make the sacrifices and so on. And so many times what that is all about is you. 
It's about you having some glory, getting some accolades, and the whole time what happens is the garden that God called you to, the garden that God put you in, you are not tending. And you're out here being like, man, I, I'm not feeling the, the fulfillment that I want. I think I, I'm getting close to the goal, though. If I just keep on going, I know it's going to happen. I'm here to tell you it's not. It, you might experience some moments of joy where you get some accolades and people are clapping and, and that feels good. But that's not the fulfillment that God has created you for. The place where you feel fulfillment is when you are tending to the garden. Who's in your garden? I, I don't know. Look for those that you are called to serve, though, especially the weak and the vulnerable. All throughout Scripture, for those of you who are reading with us right now, We've been reading through Jeremiah, and in Jeremiah chapter 5, one of the things that God declares that he was going to bring destruction to Judah because they had turned their backs on the poor and the oppressed. They were not seeking justice for them. They were seeking just to um, prosper themselves, and they were letting others just, just fall away. When you go there, what happens is it brings judgment. It brings destruction. But even in the midst of it, we're not feeling fulfillment. You may feel comfort for a while, but you're not going to feel fulfillment. How do you find that? You tend the garden that you were placed in. But it takes work. Um, my parents had a garden that was the size of several city lots. And I got to tell you, there were days I hated that garden because it was hot, right? You're, you're, you're out in the sun. I mean, you're picking weeds. You got bugs crawling on you. And, you know, it, it, it just, <laughs> I just didn't much care for the garden. But why do we go through it? Because of the harvest. Tending the garden's hard. Raising a family is hard. It's, it's not always easy. There are a lot of hard days. But the fruit that comes from it, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. So what's the garden that God's put you in? God's called you to tend that garden. I want to read on here, verse 9. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground. Trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, one of the things I want you to see, for those of you who know the story, <laughs> this is the setup, right? The, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that was the tree where God said, don't touch this. And of course, there was an enemy in the garden who said, no, 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 you want to touch that. That's the key. This is what's really going to bring you what you really desire. God's lying to you. God knows that if you take of it, you're going you're gonna to know good and evil and you're going to be like him. And then it's going to be awesome. I want to tell you that same message is being preached to us today. The, the same message that, 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 that what you really need, that, that fulfillment that you really desire is, is going to be beyond the garden where God has put you. And, 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 you know, we have this message that you can be your own God. I want to tell you this morning, you don't want to be your own God. It is miserable. You can't handle it. I mean, the gift that God has given you is that you are a child of God. No matter how old you get, you will always be a child of God. And what that means is you have a father. You have a father who's powerful, loving, and all-knowing, and he's always there to carry the weight of the world. Jesus, the Son of God, said, bring me your burdens, okay? Bring me your burdens. And he said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. And what he's saying there, what I'm going to place on you is light because I'm going to carry the heavy stuff. I want to tell you that's what you want. You don't want the whole burden. You know, sometimes we think, man, I wish I was in charge. If I was in charge, I'd do this and this. Guess what? <laughs> I've been in charge of a few things and it's no fun. Because you carry the weight of it, and that weight doesn't leave you. And you've always got people coming to you saying, why are we doing it this way? And why do you... you don't want to be your own God. 
And I want to tell you this morning, you don't have to be. God is there for you. He wants to be your God, but you must choose Him. You must choose to follow Him. But again, here's the deal. You're in the garden. God has placed you in. That's where you're going to find fulfillment. But there's always going to be a message where the enemy is trying to draw you out saying you would be happier if you were experiencing more. You know, one of the things that um, I've been blessed to travel a number of places, not only in the U.S., but outside the U.S. and so on. And, you know, there's a tendency that when you, and traveling is great, by the way. OK, but but here's what I want to say. Sometimes when we're looking at the grass on the other side and we've never been there, you know, the, the saying of it being greener, we, we think that life is always better. I got to tell you. In, in the, all the places I've been, guess what? It's, it's the same wherever you go. You, you encounter people. We're all struggling in the same way. Uh, you, you know, no matter where you're at, different challenges. You know, I go out west um, sometimes uh, every October, as you know. And over there, they're always amazed by the green grass we have here. Because over there, for anything to be gra uh, green, they have to irrigate. I mean, it is just a part of their life. There, there's no such, I mean, mowing the lawn, they don't have to worry about that, right? Unless they're irrigating. But here, as you know, if you're not mowing, I mean, it's just going to, it's going to overtake you. But my point is this, there's different blessings, there's different challenges wherever you go. But the enemy is always tempting us, no matter where we're at, saying, oh, life would be better over here. Wherever God has put you. That is the garden you are in, and he has called you to serve those around you. And it's in that serving that we find the fulfillment. And that is what God had created both Adam and Eve for. Um, now, I want to skip verse 10, and I want to go all the way down to verse 15, which says this. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. Tend and watch over it. So that's what we've been talking about. Tend and watch over. Those are the things that we're called to do. We're called to watch over, but to also tend. What, what does that mean? So that means in a garden, for instance, we're, we're keeping the predators out, but also what is needed when it comes to tending. Well, it needs nutrients, okay? So needs water. As we've said here, we don't really have to worry about that. Most of the time we've got water. But well, what else it needs? Well, fertilizer, right? Uh, I have people come to me sometimes and I have this big pile of manure <laughs> at my house and sometimes they want that to, to help out with their gardens. So that's part of tending it. There, and this is where also in a family structure, this is where the, the, the mother and father come into play because there's protection and there's tending. But that's not always a, a male-female thing. Um, it, no matter what your gender is, you can be a protector and you can be those who tend. But, but here's my point that I want to say. What it takes is working together. And, and we don't always have the same skill sets when it comes to protecting and tending. But it takes both. It takes both. Like right now, it, you, you may not even realize this, but, but there is security that is happening right now so that we can focus on the Word of God. We have a whole security team here right now that is monitoring everything, and we don't want to bring attention to it, so hopefully you don't even notice it. But you know what? It's going on. Why? Because it's needed. Because in order to really um, focus on the Lord and grow in, there also needs to be this protection. Because that's the world that we live in. But again, when we get drawn away and we don't fulfill our role, what happens? Well, the, the enemy comes in. Um, Things aren't tended to. And what happens is fruit is not produced in the way that God intends when we get drawn away. Verse 16. But the Lord God warned them, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure 
to die. And so much of the death that we see around us, so much of the destruction of the family, why is it coming? It's becoming because of this. Because we are not tending to what's really important. We're all out there chasing, chasing some kind of goal, hoping that it's going to bring us fulfillment. If you're in that place this morning, I just want to tell you, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. And I want to tell you that, that God has put you in a garden, whatever that is, a family, your place of work, whatever it is, and you are there to serve. That's where you're going to find your fulfillment, not in chasing other things. Verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals, all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, all the wild animals. But there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. Last verse. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. You know, from the very beginning, God existed in community. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's so interesting that when He creates man, He creates us in community. He creates us in community to where are we individuals? Absolutely. But do we need one another? Yes, we do. He created us in that very way. And see, here's the, again, the secret of fulfillment. It's about serving. I mean, especially in marriage, when you talk about marriage. How can a marriage be fulfilling? It cannot be fulfilling if each person is looking for what they can get out of it. If each person is looking for how they can make the other one serve them and, and do their job better so that they will be happier, I, I'm here to tell you it's going to be absolutely miserable. How can it be fulfilling? It's when both of them have the mindset of how can I serve them? And they can't wait till, well, I'm waiting until they start serving me. Then I'll start serving back. You end up in a stalemate. That doesn't happen. You can apply that to relationships everywhere you go. Your work relationships. What, your, your other family relationships. If you have the mindset of how can they serve me, guess what? You're going to be miserable. If you look for ways for how can I serve them, how can I bless them even when they're not serving me, Guess what? You can find fulfillment. Again, it's your garden. It's where you've been placed. I mean, uh, thinking about the, you know, the fruit that comes from the garden, it only happens when we focus upon it, when we put time into it. But if we're constantly drawn away and we're not focused on those relationships, guess what? They don't yield the fruit that they were intended to do. So this morning... What's drawing you away from the garden? Uh, are, are you, has the enemy um, brought you into a, a selfish mindset? That's what happened with Adam and Eve. They were brought into the selfish mindset of you can have more. Listen, <laughs> God loves you. God is not withholding anything from you. He's not punishing you either. If the enemy's been telling you that, no, that is not what the, what the Lord is after. He has already taken the punishment that was due you. He took that on the cross. Now, will he discipline you? Yes, he will. But the discipline is always for the good. And so you can know you don't have to go chasing after things that God hasn't called you to. Because God wants to give you everything that you need. Everything um, that will truly be a blessing to you. So you can take your eyes off that. And you can begin to focus on where God has put you.
And I want you to think about that. What is the garden that God has put me in? Who are the people that God has called me to serve? Who are those that that really need me? And, And so many times, again, here's the thing. It doesn't bring a lot of glory. Serving the underprivileged doesn't bring a lot of glory. Serving your family, your kids, I'm sorry, it just doesn't bring a lot of glory. But I want to tell you, it's the most fulfilling thing that you will ever do. Father, thank you. Um, thank you. As